December 1944 Battle of the Bulge American GIs are digging into the frozen earth, waiting for the German onslaught. Suddenly, a tank bursts through the tree line. The infantrymen grab their bazookas. The silhouette is terrifying. Sloped armor, a low profile, a long 75mm barrel. It looks exactly like a miniature German panther. But then, they see the white star on the hull. For years, American light tank crews had been driving the M5 Stuart. It was tall, flat, and armed with a 37mm gun that troops affectionately called the popcorn shooter because it bounced off German armor like hail. The U.S. Army was desperate. They needed a tank that moved like a scout but hit like a heavyweight. What they got was the M24 Chaffee. It was a Cadillac hot rod wrapped in steel. It featured the same gun as a Sherman, the engine of a luxury sedan, and a suspension system that made it the smoothest ride of the war. It was the best light tank of World War II, period. But history is cruel. This masterpiece arrived just in time to face the heaviest tanks Germany ever built, and then vanished into obscurity until it was resurrected in the jungles of Vietnam and the frozen hills of Korea. Today, we are doing a deep dive into the M24 Chaffee, the tank that arrived too late to win the war, but too early to be appreciated. To appreciate the Chaffee, you have to understand the nightmare of 1942. U.S. light tank doctrine was based on speed. Reconnaissance, not combat. The M3 and M5 Stuarts were fast, nearly 40 miles per hour. But by 1943, in North Africa and Italy, speed wasn't enough. If an M5 Stuart ran into a German Panzer IV, the American crew had two choices, run away or die. Their 37mm gun couldn't penetrate the side of a Tiger at point-blank range. The Ordnance Department knew this. They started a project called the T-7. It was supposed to be the Super Stuart. But this is a classic story of government scope creep. They added a bigger gun, then heavier armor, then a bigger engine to move the heavier armor. The T-7 ballooned from 14 tons to 29 tons. It wasn't a light tank anymore. It was a bad medium tank. The Army killed the project. So. In April 1943, General Adna Chaffee Jr., the father of the U.S. Armored Force, demanded a reset. The requirements were physically impossible. Weight, under 20 tons, to cross light bridges. Gun, 75 millimeters, same as the Sherman. Armor, sloped, to deflect shots. Powertrain, reliable. It was a contradiction. You can't have a big gun and big armor on a light chassis. Something had to give. The engineers at Cadillac, General Motors' luxury division, stepped up to the plate. They decided that if they couldn't add more steel, they would add more science. When I say this tank was a Cadillac, I mean it literally. Pop the rear deck, and you wouldn't find a clunky radial aircraft engine like the Sherman. You found two Cadillac Series 44 T-24 V-8 engines. These were basically the same engines used in civilian luxury cars in 1942, just hardened for war. They produced roughly 220 horsepower combined. But the magic was in the transmission. The Chaffee used the hydromatic automatic transmission. Think about that. In a Sherman or a T-34, the driver is wrestling with a stick shift, double clutching, grinding gears, fighting the machine. In the Chaffee, you put it in drive and stepped on the gas. It was smooth, quiet, and reduced driver fatigue massively. Then came the suspension. The Chaffee introduced torsion bars to U.S. service. Instead of vertical springs that bounced the crew around, the wheels were on long metal bars that twisted to absorb shock. This provided a stable firing platform. An M24 crew could actually shoot on the move. 
at least better than anyone else. But the biggest engineering miracle was the gun. The standard Sherman 75mm gun weighed too much. It would tip a light tank over. So, the engineers stole from the Air Force. The B-25 Mitchell bomber used a lightweight 75mm cannon, the M5-M6, for anti-shipping strikes. It had a thinner barrel and a concentric recoil mechanism that took up less space. They shoehorned this aircraft gun into the Chaffee's turret. Suddenly, a 19-ton scout could punch just as hard as a 33-ton Sherman. The first M24s arrived in Europe in November 1944. They were brand new, smelling of factory paint. They were issued to the 2nd Cavalry Reconnaissance Squadron and the 740th Tank Battalion, just in time for Hitler's last gamble. On December 16th, the Battle of the Bulge erupted. The 740th is a crazy story. They were a ghost unit. They had crews, but no tanks. When the Germans attacked, they raided a supply depot in Spremont, Belgium. They found a few M24 Chaffees sitting there. Without even test driving them, they loaded ammo, painted over the shipping grease, and drove straight into the path of Colonel Piper's SS Panzer Division. The Chaffee crews quickly realized two things. Their armor, maximum 38 millimeters, was paper. A Panzerfaust or a 75 millimeter shell would go right through. They were faster than anything on the battlefield. The nickname Panther Pup stuck because the silhouette confused the Germans. In the fog, the M24's sloped armor looked like a distant panther. That split second of hesitation from German gunners saved American lives. The manual said, do not engage enemy armor. The manual was wrong. March 5, 1945. Near Dormagen, Germany. Two M24s from the 4th Cavalry Group bumped into two German heavy tanks. Reports say Tigers, but historians believe they were likely Panthers. In a Stuart, this is a death sentence. In a Chaffee, it was an opportunity. The German tanks were focused down the road. The Chaffees used their V-8 engines to sprint through the rubble, flanking the Giants. At close range, the lightweight 75mm gun barked. Citation, official after-action reports, confirmed the M24s put rounds through the side armor and rear engine decks of the German tanks. Both Panthers were destroyed. This was the vindication of the design. The Chaffee wasn't just a scout, it was a predator. But the war ended in May 1945. The M24 never got to replace the Stuart completely. It was a victory lap tank. Its real tragedy was yet to come. Fast forward five years. June 1950. North Korea invades the South. The U.S. Army had gutted its military. The only tanks available in Japan were M24 Chaffees used for occupation duty. Their tracks were worn, their engines tired. They were rushed to Korea to stop a Soviet-equipped armored spearhead. This is where the legend of the Chaffee takes a dark turn. In World War II, the Chaffee was a flanker. In Korea, desperation forced it to be a main battle tank. At the Battle of Osan, American crews in light M24s went head-to-head -head with North Korean T-34-85s. It was a slaughter. The 75mm gun, great in 1944, could not penetrate the frontal armor of a T-34. American crews watched their shells shatter harmlessly, right before the 85mm Soviet guns tore their light tanks apart. The M24 was decimated. It wasn't a bad tank. It was just the wrong tool for the job. It was a scalpel being used as a hammer. But the Chaffee had one final cinematic act left. 1954. Indochina. The French are fighting the Viet Minh. 
the French decide to build a base deep in the jungle valley of Dien Bien Phu. It is surrounded by mountains. There are no roads. The French commander needs armor. But how do you get a tank into a valley accessible only by air? You take it apart. In Operation Castor, the French dismantled 10 M24 chaffees. They broke them down into 180 separate pieces. Hull, turret, engine, tracks, bolts. They loaded them onto Bristol freighter aircraft, flew them over the jungle, landed on a dirt strip under fire, and reassembled them in open-air workshops. This was the Bison Squadron. For 57 days, these ten tanks were the backbone of the defense. They were mobile pillboxes. They charged into the wire to repel human wave attacks. When the fuel ran out, they became static turrets. When the ammo ran out, the crews fought with machine guns. When the base finally fell, the crews destroyed their own tanks to prevent capture. The M24 had gone from a panther pup to a jungle fortress. The M24 Chaffee was eventually replaced by the M41 Walker Bulldog, but it stayed in service around the world for decades. The Uruguayan army was still using modernized Chaffees into the 2000s. So, was it the best light tank of the war? The German Panzer II was too weak. The Soviet T-70 was too cramped. The British Tetrarch was a joke. The M24 Chaffee was the first modern light tank. It introduced the torsion bar suspension, the concentric recoil system, and the automatic transmission to the battlefield. It arrived too late to change the outcome of World War II. It was sacrificed unfairly in Korea. But in terms of pure engineering, the M24 stands alone. It proved that light doesn't have to mean victim. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe this channel. This is Microdocs. Thanks for watching.